Okay, I'm going to talk through uh, a, a number of slides just to, to, to give a little bit of background uh, specifically about some of the, the kind of key areas uh, that, that I still feel are important um, in, the, in the literature um, that's been around a little bit of time but, but feeds into this course unit in a sort of literature you should be aware of um, uh, as background reading. So um, these are some of the perspectives um, that underpin what we're going to do on this course unit. Um, as I said in uh, the talk uh, in Unit 1, um, technology has moved on and uh, we've moved from um, uh, technologies that used to be regularly around in classes like the overhead projector or the cassette recorder and we're now increasingly using tools uh, that are mobile uh, like the mobile phone or the uh, the, the iPod Touch and, and these kinds of tools um, and we're increasingly moving away from spaces where as you see in some of these pictures people working you know in large numbers individualized in in a space like the picture of the, the Chinese children in a language lab. I'm not saying that that's gone um, I know that those things are still around those those things are, those sort of kind of spaces are still you know heavily used in some parts of the world but there is a trend uh, towards uh, the use of mobile technologies and also a trend uh, as you see on this next slide uh, to uh, using Web2 technologies um, although these are not exclusively uh, what we use so um, you know, a lot of you will be familiar now with tools like Moodle, VLE like Moodle um, and you'll be familiar with tools like Wiki and Twitter and so on. So you know, we'll be uh, talking about some more traditional tools and we'll be looking at some of the developments of, of, of different tools and, and what they what they offer um, but um, you know, uh, we're very conscious that, that things have moved on um, and we're in a different place to the place we were in five years ago. However it's still you know, useful to look back at some of the literature uh, that um, uh, that uh, was written uh, some time ago because it's still it's still asking pertinent questions um, and offering pertinent frameworks uh, for analyzing what we do so one uh, good article that it would be good to have a look at is uh, the one by Salaberry not an English language teacher but a teacher of other languages who in a review article um, that prompted um, me particularly to sort of begin to to think quite hard about um, the role that technology um, was beginning to play in, in Web2 technologies. Uh, he asked, you know, towards the end of this article, he, he put four questions, which in some ways are still very relevant today. So he asked a question about technological sophistication. Does the fact that technology becomes more sophisticated, does it help us achieve uh, what we want to achieve pedagogically? Um, do we end up just being technologically driven uh, rather than you know taking into account the things that we believe are appropriate for for language development another important question is is uh, in you know when new technologies come along and I'm not talking just about hardware when I say technology I mean I mean software apps as we now call them um, you know, can, can they be usefully exploited? Can all different sort of technologies that come along, can they be usefully exploited? I mean, we do say, see, you know, I mean, there are lots of Web2 technologies that are here today and gone tomorrow, and clearly people try them out uh, and they disappear. Some stand the test of time. And, uh, you know, we'll look at some of those uh, as part of this course unit. But it's the important issue is thinking about, you know, what is it, you know, that this offers us that, that something else doesn't offer? What dimension does it, does it give to us? A third question uh, is the notion of integration. So, you know, while we uh, still uh, teach in the way we do inside, you know, most of us teach inside four walls um, you know, with, with groups of captive students, um, with syllabi and curricula that we, 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 we have to work with, exam systems that, that we work within. Um, you know, how can we, you know, you know, successfully integrate technologies into, into what we do? Um, you know, um, and there are issues around, um, you know, uh, the, the idea of uh, either kind of interacting, sitting at the computer like those those children were in the language lab, you know, interacting directly with the computer individually, not kind of talking to each other, or the notion of, you know, sort of actually having a conversation around a tool. Um, 
and uh, you know that that tool might be you know in a classroom it might be around but you know as classrooms sort of change and develop you know, maybe it's sort of three different people in a different 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 physical spaces communicating uh, through the technology so interacting through the uh, the, the computer and the final question um, is a notion of efficiency, and just because um, you know the technology is there, it doesn't mean it's uh, it's it's as efficient, uh, you know, in, uh, in 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 providing the sorts of um, um, access to to ideas, ways of presenting ideas, um, as uh, you know, as maybe older technologies. I mean, it's very interesting. Um, I'm a, a fan of the the, the, the series called Numbers. Uh, whenever I mention this, people have never heard of it, but it's American TV series, cop series, and it's based around solving mathematical problems. And while they do use a lot of computers uh, for crunching data, it's still very interesting to watch them, you know, regularly writing, um, you know, not on a blackboard anymore, but on, you know, uh, glass boards uh, with pens but still a lot of stuff is written and because you know in that kind of context it, it it's just so much easier uh, to use that tool in that kind of way um, and you know maybe sometimes the amount of time and effort we spend uh, to to create a piece of material may not be an efficient use of our time and may not give sufficient benefit to the students so you know it's well worth thinking about these things um, here's a you know little cartoon um, that that makes the point very effectively, um, and uh, and I think you know it's it does it in a neat way. Um, so uh, this off the mark um, uh, little cartoon I think uh, summarises the, some of the ideas I've been talking about. Now there's an interesting framework that uh, is one that we we use still use quite a lot, and one that gets referred to in later literature, and um, it's not originally uh, Mike Levy's um, you know, notion, but he picked it up from Taylor, but he's the one uh, that, that's promulgated it. A 1997 book, Computer Assisted Language Learning Context and Conceptualization, you know, might be considered these days a fairly foundational work. Um, and still considered a foundational work. Um, he did an interesting study there, and uh, you know he taught very much about the relationship between tutor tool and tutee in there, which came from a guy called Taylor back in the 80s. Um, and I think it's still a useful distinction um, uh, when it comes to talking about different technologies. And the idea of the tutor um, is that the uh, the computer is programmed uh, by experts. Um, in uh, and uh, you know they're experts in the subject and experts in programming or maybe they get people to program it for them and then the computer presents material the student responds it's evaluated by the computer and the result of the evaluation determines what to present next so you know it, it relates a little bit to artificial intelligence um, you know the idea that you know the 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 the, uh, the computer acts as a tutor in this context as the student learns um, th through the, the, the auspices of the computer. And BT, um, it, both in his 2003 but also in the 2010 book, um, you know, talks about it in the terms, in terms of, you know, the computer sort of sitting there or the app, as we would say these days, uh, sits there and says, I have answers to your questions, just click here. Um, whereas actually, you know, so it's not very subtle, is it? Whereas a teacher, you know, might sort of not say, you know, I've got the answer, but might be more challenging, you know, saying, you know, why do you think, what do you think the answer might be? You know, so getting, you know, sort of getting the students to engage a bit more, you know, cognitively into this process um, or, you know, why, why do you ask this question? So a, a, a sort of subtler response uh, than, than the actual computer is able to offer. A tool, um, yeah, we, we all understand the notion of tool, and the example, um, you know, in terms of the teaching is the um, the Excel spreadsheet lesson that that I did with the students, um, where you know we're using a traditional generic tool, not a special ELT tool, something uh, that that comes with the with the bit of technology. So you know, like with a you know a mobile these days, you know, it has built into it a clock or a map um, and you know we can use those in a variety of different ways to help you know uh, you know help uh, 
do various activities in language but also in other subjects as well so that notion of a tool um, you know is, is an important notion and then finally to um, you know it is you know this idea that you know you actually teach the computer um, you know um, and in that sense um, you know the, the the student you know learns to to program the student creates material um, and probably you might equate that a little bit these days with the notion of web 2 because of the, that ability to be able to kind of interact and engage with material in ways that you certainly couldn't do in, in the early days of uh, the use of computers in language learning um, you know I, I, immediately as you know you start thinking about tutor you start thinking of uh, you know uh, a tutor as very behavioristic and tool as constructivist you know so there's that assumption that somehow you know tutor bad tool good um, you know in, in current ideas about uh, you know theoretical ideas about the way that um, you know that, that, that we think about uh, developing uh, a language and, and other other sort of uh, subjects in, in, in you know in, in the school context um, you know and but we have to be a bit careful about that because you know the, the you know that it's not necessarily that the tool is being used in that kind of creative constructivist way it's not necessarily being used like that and at the same time you know the tutor idea is is also maybe uh, important you know we we've perhaps you know begun to question a little bit whether you know everything you know you've got to build kind of some kind of idea of a language before you can begin to use it creatively so you know we can't make immediate assumptions that you know one is good and and the other is bad um if you want to follow up uh, some of these ideas um, you, know, you can look at um, you know, particular uh, views of Cal um, uh, that, that perhaps are helpful in, in setting some of the background as well as the, the tutor tool framework uh, you've got Stephen Bax's work um, uh, that, that you know where he talks about issues of normalization the way that you know uh, technology um, you know uh, as it sort of disappears into uh, the background we forget about it um, it actually becomes more valuable more functional um, we have Chappelle's ideas of second language acquisition theory um, and there are several um, uh, you know several um, uh, perspectives that that she presents and and we'll be coming back to those um and you know you can have a look at that quite you know fairly recent article revision of uh, of her ideas about sla theory um in that modern language journal and and, and there are also some other uh, articles in there that you might find helpful um and then there's a quite old article there by Warshauer and Healy. Um, that's an overview that, that was done in 1998, but still um, some interesting ideas in there uh, that I think are still relevant to today. I mean, Warshauer and Healy, you know, were very much ahead of the game um, in talking about issues of digital literacy. So, you know, if you want to get into the background literature, I recommend you know you at least sort of skim through. Um, certainly the Bax and Chappelle and if you want to go further back and get a deeper knowledge then Walshower and Healy are important I mean Mark Walshower and Deborah Healy you know key players still in this field um, so you know if you want a framework um, uh, to work through uh, then you could read Walshower and Healy and, and then look at Bax um, look at you know the relationship between uh, the notions of behavioristic Cal and communicative Cal and integrative Cal and, and Bax critique of, of that so you know there's a there's a you know developmental sort of discussion there and you could think about your perspective on you know where we're at in terms of normalization certainly Bax in a more recent article in in 2011 um, uh, in the International Journal of Computer Assisted Language Learning and Teaching sort of you know started you know sort of saying well maybe we need to, to revisit this notion of, of normalization you can look at the Chappelle which is a more recent article um, and see some of the developments uh, that have occurred uh, over time and uh, you know as I've been getting you to do think about you know your experiences of uh, of using technology for language development um, and and relating that back to to some of the literature um, 
there's another useful article there um, again a background article um, and it also raises you know again an important question um, where you know where is the technology induced pedagogy um, you know and it sort of it discusses issues around you know is has um, you know technology actually changed our notion of, of, of pedagogy um, and I think and um, you know there's some um, uh, issues to reflect on there um, if you have the time to get through that so there's fair amount of kind of background reading you don't have to do that all at the moment but it'll set the scene uh, for some of the uh, the more specific work that we do with uh, particular skills and I think it's important uh, you know to get a bit of a historical perspective um, as you develop your ideas going forward